Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a mesh effect with face deformation. So when you open the mouth, you can go spiky or horny or whatever you like. So I'll show you how to make this deformation mask using the face reference assets pack that's available from Spark AR. And we'll be using Blender to actually edit and modify that file. We'll be importing it into Spark and then I'll give you a sense of just like how you can play around with it to create something kind of cool like this. So yeah, open mouth, spiky face, let's do this. First things first, we're gonna be using the Spark AR Face Reference Assets Pack. So you can click the link in the description to find this website and hit the download button to get all of those for free. We'll actually be using the OBJ mesh here. So once you have that, download it and it will appear on your desktop open it up, go to the mesh, and you'll see this face mesh.obj file. That's the one we'll be using. There's also a head occluder, textures, so it's the same one that you get for the face uh, masculine and feminine meshes. This is one I already downloaded, so there's a GIMP project file in here for some reason, but ignore that. We're also gonna be using Blender, so once again, links in the description, go to the website, download the most recent version of the software. Once you have it available and ready on your desktop, open it up, create a new project, and we're ready to go. You wanna just open a general project, hit X and delete to get rid of that cube, and then we're gonna come up here to file, import wavefront.obj and then you just want to navigate to the area where you have the face reference asset folder go to your mesh import this the face mesh.obj import that you'll see it's quite small so you're gonna to have to zoom in where whatever way that is for you on a track on a Mac it's just using the trackpad but there might be a scroll wheel on your mouse so do that and you'll see you have this lovely face here you can also see it from the back it looks kind of creepy but yeah once we have that, we're by default, we're in this layout mode. We wanna switch over to sculpting and it should bring up a drop down menu along the side. If it doesn't, just go back to layout, sculpting again, deselect, just keep playing around with it. Eventually it will appear. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, there's probably a technique to it, but I'm very amateur when it comes to Blender. But yeah, once you have that here and this drop down menu appears to the side, these are all the brushes that we have access to. So now we can draw around on this mesh and adjust it and change the way it looks. I control Z, go back on that one. But we're gonna be using this grab tool here and just select some random points, drag out, and you'll see how it doesn't quite create clean spikes. So you wanna just drag it and orient things until you get it looking the way you want. Uh, it's not the most complicated thing, but yeah, just play around. You can have multiple horns around the face wherever you like, just like this. You don't have to be too detailed with it. The only thing I would recommend is that you have them pointing out of the head and don't have spikes going into the head because it will mess up and they will, the occlusion won't work as well when they're trying to push into something that already exists, like a human face. Uh, it's better to have them morphing the face outwards rather than inwards. you see what I mean in a minute. Uh, once you're satisfied with the result, you can play around with it again. Like I said, if they're not perfect points, then you can grab the ends, the tips here, and just drag them until they're nice and sharp and look exactly how you want them to. You can also, just quickly, I should mention that you can also turn off mirroring. So here you have X, Y, Z symmetry. I had X on by default. If we get rid of that, then it will just work for the area that we're using the brush on and not both sides at the same time. But for a face mesh, it kind of makes sense to have symmetry on. You can do it for the Y as well. So now it'll do the top and the bottom at the same time. You see the chins going in and the forehead uh, I'll undo that as well. Uh, like I say, I'm pretty amateur when it comes to Blender, so I'll leave the AX symmetry on. We've got a nice symmetrical mesh. Uh, once we have that done, you can save the project or you can just export it directly. So file, export, same thing, wavefront.obj. Save it to your desktop just so it's easy. We'll save it as horny bob uh, and then we can export that. I'll hide Blender for a second and you'll see here on the desktop now I have hornybob.obj, which is our actual mesh and then I have this .mtl file. Now we're gonna create a new project in Spark AR, so let's do that. Okay, here we are, switch over to 2D view, open up the patch editor, and make a little bit of space for all the patches that we're gonna have. Now we wanna right click over here and add a face mesh that will appear automatically inside of this face tracker here. I'm gonna rename this to Horny Bob, and now we can drag the OBJ file, just the OBJ, not the MTL as well, just the OBJ file, drag that into your assets panel. And now up here under Horny Bob's mesh, rather than adding a material, what we're gonna do is click this plus button here for deformation and select Horny Bob. And you can see the effect already, it's pretty sweet. There's actually a slider here too, so you can decrease and increase the amount of spikiness that you're getting from the effect. 
We'll leave that at 100. And what I'm gonna do is create a patch for it by selecting this here. Now we're gonna create some interactions. So if I take our face tracker and we drag that here into the patch editor, now we can connect the face to the, oh, oh no, we can't. So what we need to do is add something in between that will essentially act as a slider. So if we drag out from here, we can select from interactions and I'm gonna be using the mouth open here because we have two outputs. One is the open state, which is a signal that's on when the mouth is open. So this is basically just a Boolean of on off, which doesn't actually work with this because it's a slider and the other one is openness which is what we'll be using which is a range from zero to one so the more open the mouth is the closer it is to one and when the mouth is closed it's all the way down to zero so if we double tap and create a mouth open patch we can connect from openness here to the face mesh weight and now if I switch over to the FaceTime camera hey what's up now when I open my mouth all the way you'll see the spikes and I can open it partially and it's a little bit more subtle but the effect is there, as you can see. And it works the same way as that horn one. Uh, I'm sure you've seen on Instagram, everyone uses it. Trippy Red, Tara Delevingne, even Dodie Clark likes the horns uh, filter. So it's like a popular effect, but uh, this is obviously a very amateur version of it, just to show all the different things that you can do. So now that we've got that, we can come up here to the Horny Bob mesh. And if we want, we can create a material. There is actually a default material that comes with the model that you've imported. So we have the default OBJ material here. So we can just select that. Uh, but by default, it's this face warp material, but we can switch it out for default OBJ or create a new one. Uh, and that will just bring back the mesh so it's visible again. Now, if we open and close the mouth, same effect, but it's closer to what we were seeing in Blender rather than having it directly applied to the skin. Now we can come down here to the default OBJ material. We can change the color if we want. So we can make the mesh a different color or we can add a texture. So I'm here on Google and I've just searched for scary textures. And this is one that I think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna open it in a new tab, drag it over to my desktop and import that into my assets panel. Now I'm gonna apply the texture that I've just imported onto my face mesh. So you can kind of see the effect already. Now when I open my mouth, it warps that texture, but still leaves it applied to the mesh. So, you know, you could play around with this. You can change the color once it's in. Uh, <laughs> you can see the watermark there. So I won't actually be publishing this anywhere as an actual filter. Make sure that you have full ownership of all the textures and things that you're using. You can use photographs that you've taken as well. You can use basically anything, but I'll leave that red for now. You can also add an emission. So if we switch this over to something like this, you can create a more glowing effect with combining the red and the blue and a little bit of a light emitter. You can also add specular, which will make things kind of glossy and you can reduce that. I like 80 is pretty good or somewhere around 60, it increases the matte and reduces the glossiness somewhat. So the further down you go, you'll see it's a brighter light, but it's more matte. And then this is very, very glossy and shiny. So yeah, I like to leave that around somewhere between 60 and 80. So let's go for 70 here. One more thing is that you can come here to the ambient light that exists already in the scene by default. And it's set at 20, but if we increase that again to something like 75, it will drastically change the effect uh, based on the amount of light that's being shone onto our mesh. We can do it with a directional light as well. So we can reduce that or increase it. You can just play around with these effects to create something that you like. And once you're done and satisfied, test it out with your mouth open, make sure the spikes are looking good. Uh, you can also add another mesh if you want. So if we hit the face tracker here, add a second mesh. You wanna make sure to drag it above the horny bob mesh that we've made so that it's sitting underneath and you wanna uncheck the eyes and the mouth. So now we can add a second color here. Uh, we're gonna move the position back slightly because you'll see that there's some clipping around the edge. So they're both sitting on the same exact Z layer right now uh, at zero. So if we move this one back to minus 0.01, then the clipping is gone, but the meshes are the same size. So if I reduce the size as well to 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9, because it's behind, all we're seeing are the eyes and the mouth. We don't really need any of that stuff around the side or underneath. And now we can create a material create a new material, uh, rename that to eyes, mouth, do the same up here, eyes, mouth, just make sure that everything's consistent and easy to follow. I don't like the dot there, we've got to get rid of that. Okay, now we can switch the shader type from standard to flat and get rid of this gray color. Very nice, clean white. You can change the color in here to anything you like, or you can just leave them white, which I think looks kind of cool. So there it is, that's pretty much the whole effect. I'll switch this out to the vertical mode, and there it is face mesh, deformation mask with a texture and another mesh behind it with some eyes on it. I showed you how to use the face reference assets pack, which you can download for free. Once again, links to all of this will be in the description down below uh, with the deformation mask that we made using Blender, 
how to add some interactions to that so that you can set the range to adjust from zero to one with the mouth open patch, like so. Uh, and yeah, play around with it, play around with the light reflections. It's kind of a simple effect, but I'm sure people will be interested in this kind of thing. So I wanted to make a video about it. I've actually had this on my list of videos to make since I'm gonna say January, 2020, and I just never ever got around to it. Like I've had the original version of this filter that I made just practicing for well over a year. And yeah, the list just kept growing and growing and growing. And people even, some people even asked for this before, especially as that horn filter uh, got more popular. But you know, it is what it is. We made it in the end. As I said though, if you're finding textures online, I would recommend not using ones with watermarks and trying to maintain ownership over all of the assets that you use, especially if you're planning to publish these to Instagram or Facebook. Maybe try taking some photos of materials in your room or outside, like curtain materials, fabrics, plants, foliage, that kind of stuff, and just seeing what you can come up with because it will all import and the final result of each filter will be much more unique. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the tutorial and found something I said useful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this somewhere where people might be interested in anything like that. I have links down below to my Gumroad and a Patreon, which nobody signed up to yet, but you can contribute as little as one pound or one dollar. I don't know exactly which currency it's in, but it totally will help the channel grow and give me more freedom to do tutorials and all kinds of cool stuff, hopefully. One thing I would like is to buy a subscription to Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom for 20 pound a month. And I can't really justify it right now, but I think that would be my first goal is to move from GIMP over to something more professional. But yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. This is like 105 or 110 videos I've uploaded now, and I've managed pretty well without it so far. So it's not a huge priority, but it would be pretty cool. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Hello, did you know I have a Gumroad page where I'm selling a bunch of filters? If not, check it out, links in the description. I also have a Patreon where you can get them at a discounted rate and support the channel. Thank you.